so we did this clear definition if you have seen that also and we did that as a part of appropriate government right so appropriate government means in relation to an establishment right being a mine or anything in accordance to and that this is specifically talking about under the maternity ba benefit act 1961 so you need to be very well versed with that definition okay in the maternity act an inspector is appointed under which section so the appointment of an inspector is definitely done under section 14 okay what is the maximum period for which any women is entitled to uh, to maternity benefit we have done that also from 12 to 24 weeks so basically the minimum number of weeks is going to be 12 okay then how many weeks in advance a written notice for maternity leave has to be given to the employer by an expecting woman so if the expecting woman has to give a pre notice to the employer so beforehand so that he know or the occupier knows that this person or this female worker is not going to be uh, pre present for some time so that advance notice is given 7 weeks prior the um, the prior she starts taking her leaves right so for this also specifically in maternity benefit act you need to remember the specific timeline timelines that what is the time period minimum time period uh, time period required for uh, her to take maternity uh, leaves what is the maximum right in case of a miscarriage what is the uh, uh, extension of um, uh, leaves that are given what are the other benefits right so you need to be very specific with the timeline specifically in accordance to the benefit maternity benefit act 1961 till what age of the child will a mother gets nur two nursing breaks in the course of a daily work we did that also when we were doing crutches right so in crutch when there is a uh, there are two nursing breaks given to each female employee up to the age when the child is up to which age so that is the question it, it is asking so for a daily work definitely the two nursing breaks are given up to up for a for a mother whose child is up to 15 months okay we did that also specifically As per Section 18, if an employer discharges or dismisses a woman during or on account of her absence from the work during the maternity leave, then what is the punishment faced by an employer? So we have done that also. That usually the um, you know the, the it becomes a responsibility of the employer to ensure that if the female employee has taken the maternity leaves and. in that case if by some other reason he or she dismisses her from the job then he will be held you know he will be held accountable for the fact that he is going to be punished for the fact right so for the clearly we did that also and the punishment was extended up to 3 months or more up to 1 year right then as per section 9 for how many weeks a woman is entitled for leave in case of a miscarriage so for in case of a miscarriage also we uh, have to remember the timeline so definitely uh, to heal the body and uh, to heal mentally also a woman needs certain time so in that case of a specifically in case of a miscarriage there is clear definite uh, defining of 6 week leave for which a woman is entitled in case of a miscarriage then the to state true or false section 17 describes the obligation of the employer under maternity benefit act is it true or is it false so we did that also the obligations of an employer so definitely this is not here in section 17 so it's going to be false you need to remember the section what is the account of medical bonus entitled to a women who is also entitled to receive maternity benefit the specific amount that they are asking you in case of the entitlement of to receive the money the specific amount is 250 rupees so you in case of so if you can see that also when you are preparing for this particular um, act try to be memorizing the timeline and if any uh, you know money value or anything related to that that is there mentioned the timeline let, let's let's say the what uh, if in case of anybody who is violating the law what is the punishment so you need to remember that timeline for the leaves also you need to remember the specific timeline for anything in accordance to that you need to be very specific about the timelines and when it comes to the amount also that is in accordance to the offenses or any case of any other uh, be benefit especially for female workers here you need to remember the amount okay so i'm just telling you clear ways by which you can prepare it in a better way the last question we are having today is the mat for maternity benefit act 1961 
the maternity benefit act objectives were achieved by the enactment of factories act 1948 payment of wages act 1936 employment state Assur insurance act 1948 standing orders act 1946 if you clearly remember when we were doing uh, employee state insurance act of 1948 we clearly have learnt about it that is the part of that so enactment of that so definitely option c these options factories act gives you certain guidelines but it is not in a, an enactment to of that okay and payment of wages act is also just specifying little details about the fact for the female workers and standing orders act also is not in that much related in enactment so when it talks about specifically about the word enactment be very very clear of the fact it is talking about employee state assurance act 1948 right 